All right, hi, welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be talking about creating HDRIs in Keyshot, and I'll show you how to get lighting looking nice and clean like this. Uh, it's gonna be a short video, and I'm just gonna talk about the basic tools and setup. So uh, if you have Keyshot Pro, you'll also have under the environment tab over here, a uh, setting called uh, HDRI editor. You'll see that we have this window here, and we can click and move these lights that I've created. So I'm going to go through the process of creating and positioning these lights as well as talking about a few quick and important things to think about when you're lighting your scenes. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off this group and I'm going to create a new group. And the reason why is you can store multiple sets of HDRIs within one environment tab. So it's very easy if you're doing multiple settings, like you have multiple camera angles and you want to switch between them and then also switch to lighting without losing what you did. So let's go ahead and click here under add pin with this group selected and you'll see we've created our first light. It's updating in the viewport. Now, another thing you'll notice that's also incredibly important, you see this little target here. Now, this button is called set highlight and basically it'll grab the normals of any place that we're clicking and align the light to this position so you can place the highlight exactly how you want it and tailor your lighting very quickly, very easily. So let's just get a nice strong main light here. I'm gonna click here and then I'm gonna click done to turn off uh, set highlight. And you'll see now we have this pin created. And so what I want to do with this pin is I want to edit it after I delete these groups. I want to edit this pin. So uh, we have a few settings. So let's take a look down here we have under pin 22, we have rectangle and circular. Now, these are our two light shapes and depending on what you want to do, both of them are great. So for example, with the rectangular light, you're able to do stuff like set the X and Y uh, height and width custom for uh, each direction, which is very useful sometimes when you're trying to make special sized highlights. And uh, the circle, you can just adjust the radius. So let's make it a bit bigger than 30, which is the default. And next we have uh, color. And so we can adjust the color of the light to whatever we'd like. Uh, in this case, I'm going to leave it black and white because we're doing a studio. So the next thing, brightness. Uh, oftentimes, don't be afraid for some of your main lights to boost the, boost the brightness quite a bit. So in this case, I'm gonna make it two since the light is large and we haven't added any additional lights yet, so it's fine. Fall off. Now, fall off is pretty straightforward. You can see when I turn the fall off to one, uh, up top we have this nice soft edges around the light. Now, you have to keep in mind, you know, um, imagine you're lighting for the real world. When you're lighting for the real world, you have uh, pillows and uh, diffusers and all sorts of things that soften light and change how the light is interacting. And uh, when you're lighting in CG, it's no different. We're basically creating real life lighting using uh, imitations. From an image you know an hdri is literally projecting from a 360 sphere uh, light based on value and data onto an object so just keep in mind that fall off and these types of things can be very important now another thing that i think is also important to mention is we have this fall off mode so we have fall off from edge linear quadratic exponential and circular a lot of times i'm actually using this uh, exponential fall off mode with a rectangular light and I'm finding that I'm sometimes getting a bit softer and maybe a nicer looking light depending on the uh, subject and situation and then I also like to use the quadratic ones from time to time so let's just take this light maybe brightness 192 make it small make it a bit brighter so it's stronger but smaller. Now let's go ahead up to add pin. We can add a second light and we're going to create a light that will be our rim light. So more lighting the edges of the object rather than the main body of it. And so I'm gonna click here and click set highlight. Click the edge of the model and you'll see now we have a, a rim light and we can move this around to try and adjust it exactly how you want it. Crank that brightness up, not too high. Don't want it blown out. And then I want to add a little bit of a fall off, set it to quadratic. And 
And I want it to maybe come from the top a little bit more and be brighter. So you can see it's going from bright to dark as we go down. I'm going to go ahead and add a uh, final light and this one will be a bit more of a fill. So it'll be large, not the brightest light, and then uh, have a strong fall off. So it's kind of illuminating all of the areas without light. And we want to still have areas where we get some darkness in between the highlights as well. So in this case, I, I wanted to have a bit more of a neutral area here. And so it's filling it in, making it not feel too dark or too high contrast. Let's go ahead and make a rectangular light. Just add one more for some more interesting highlight. And we're going to make the X uh, very small and the Y size large. So now we're going to have a bit of a tall light. And I want to use set highlight and move around my object and see kind of where I think this would be best suited to catch, catch the light a little bit better. So I'm actually liking it here a bit. It catches a bit of the light on the edges of this rim. It's going to be hitting this piece of metal here, really making it pop and have some nice contrast. So uh, yeah, it's a very straightforward software. There's a lot of options that go along with it, such as generating HGRIs. So you can save it out here using save to library or export to file. We also have options for the canvas editor, which will pop up here and it allows you to edit these in a bit of a larger situation, uh, easier to see and whatnot. But honestly, I'm not needing to use this so much. I think the small one is fine. Um, furthermore, I, like I said, when you have different camera angles, it can be very helpful to, to uh, have different lighting scenarios. So for example, set one was the HDR that we just created, right? So if we turn on this old one, group six, maybe this is the one that I created for the alternate camera angle. So depending on your camera angle, you can just switch between these HDRIs and it makes your life just significantly easier. You know, I remember, um, I know a lot of times people are, uh, they're going and doing the same lighting from each angle. And I think it's very important to relight every angle. And so the HRA editor helps me achieve this goal. Now, the final thing I wanna talk about is this background. The background is basically uh, what's behind the lights. So we can make the background red we can make it green, we can make it an image. We can also make it sun and sky, a gradient or pure color. So in this case, I'm leaving it black, pure color, and I'm changing the resolution to 10,000 by 5,000. Now this is important for when we export the uh, HDRI and we can have it at the highest resolution possible. So yeah, that basically covers all of the functionality of the HDR editor in Keyshot Pro. I highly suggest using it. It's one of the most useful tools that I've ever used and one of the best reasons for me to use Keyshot over other softwares and uh, quickly create product renders. So hopefully this was helpful and I'll see you guys in the next video.